Welcome to Time Tunnel Radio. I love a mystery. teeth you have. A new Carlton Morse mystery thriller. Four o'clock in the afternoon. In the office of the A-1 detective agency, around the corner and one flight up, just off Hollywood Boulevard. It's hot, and Mary K. Brown, the cutest secretary in Hollywood, is dressed for it. Her boss, Jack Packard, is sitting directly under an electric fan, his feet up on the desk, his shirt open at the collar, and a glass of iced coffee in his hand. Boss, it's so doggone hot, it's indecent. It gets so a girl doesn't care anymore. Why don't you take off something? If I took off one thing more, you could hand me a cake of soap and a wash rag and send me to the shower. Try some iced coffee. And immediately perspiration starts out on me like a whirling spray. Honest to goodness, boss, why don't you shut up shop and let a girl go home, sit in a tub of water? Go ahead. I want to wait for Doc. What's Doc got that we want? We're supposed to turn in a report on the Bronson Firebug case. The insurance company's been screaming for it since Monday. Oh. A hundred and fifty in the shade and we got to work on a firebug case. Well, not you. What do you mean, not me? I'm your secretary, aren't I? I'm not sure sometimes. You're not sure about what? Those clothes... Maybe we ought to keep you for a pinup girl. You don't like them, huh? Mm-hmm. These clothes, you don't like them? Sure, what there is of them. But what'll the clients think? What clients? Did anyone ever tell you you're too fresh? Besides, I don't wear my clothes for the clients. No? No. I wear them for the boss. For years now, I've practically been throwing myself at him, but the poor dope isn't having any. The office is no place for romance. Well, then, for the love of Mike, why don't you take me to the Coconut Grove some dark night or or come and sit on my front porch? Uh Uh-uh. What do you mean, uh uh-uh? You're much too important to the A-1 agency as a secretary. (laughs) You think a little fraternizing on Saturday night would cut down my office efficiency on Monday morning? Look, Mary Kay, I'm too hot to argue. Uh Uh-oh, somebody in the outer office. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it. Relax, boss, it's just Doc. He's got a kid with him. Kid? Boy? Surprising as it may seem, it's a boy. See you for a minute, Jack. Sure. Okay, fella, in with you. You see this tadpole, Jack? I bet he ain't ten years old. How old are you, son? (laughs) You ain't talking. Anyway, you know what I caught him doing? Caught him purse snatching. Hey, no kidding. Yes, ma'am. Right down there on Hollywood Boulevard. Went up behind a woman, jerked the purse out from under arm, and streaked it down a side alley. He'd have got away with it, too, if he hadn't run right into my arms. Are they all right, boy? Is this a police station? Uh-oh. You did steal a woman's purse? This don't look like any police station to me. You gave the woman's purse back to her, Doc. Oh, yeah. She wanted to call a uniformed cop, but I flashed my special on her, and she let me have the kid. You've been purse snatching for quite a while? Look, if this is a police station, where's the cells where you lock people up? As a matter of fact, this isn't a police station. Oh. We're private detectives. Yeah? I'm Jack Packard. The man who brought you in is Doc Long. Is she a private detective, too? No, she's our secretary. Hmm. She's hot stuff. Say. <laughs> out of the mouths of babes. Why, where'd you get that kind of talk? You ought to have your mouth washed out. Touchy, ain't she? What's your name? Bud Edwards. At the police, I'm not scared anymore. Oh, that's good. How old are you? I'm 11. Hey, you sure about that? For crying out loud, don't you think a guy knows how old he is? Well, you don't look 11 to me. Pass it. Where do you live? 6213 Selma. Well, that's just around the corner. With your folks? Huh? 
I say, do you live with your folks? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure, my grandmother. Is that all? Yeah, that's all. It's my grandmother. Does she know that you're a purse snatcher? Um, no. You go to school? I used to. You mean you don't go to school now, kid 11 years old? I don't sleep very good. A growing boy 11 years old doesn't sleep good? What's the matter, your conscience bothering you? No. Then why don't you sleep good? Well, some nights I do. Some nights I have dreams. Uh-huh. What do you dream? I don't know. Oh, yes, you do. I don't want to think about them. Nightmares? Bad dreams, huh? Yeah. Oh, it might do you some good to tell somebody about them. Like to try they, they don't make any sense. They're crazy. Go on, I'd like to hear them. Here, you want a cold drink? No, I'm not sweating because it's hot. I sweat like this when I think about the dreams. Sometimes I wake up in the night sweating like this. Here. You want a handkerchief? No, I got one. Hey. When was the last time you had a bath? Oh, so you're one of them dames that right away gets personal, huh? <laughs> but your hands, they're filthy. Doesn't your grandmother ever make you clean up? No. Never mind about that. Let's get back to this dream business. You'd rather talk about that anyway, wouldn't you? I never told anybody. Sure. It's probably why they keep worrying you. You tell us about them, it'll probably make you feel a lot better. Well, Grandma can tell when I'm restless. She can tell even before I get into bed that I'm not going to sleep good. Oh, she can? Yeah, then she gives me something to make me sleep. Capsules? No, with a needle. Hey, roll up your sleeve, bud. Here, let me do it for you. No, it's this arm. Okay. You're getting all this down there, Kay? Every word. Think it might mean something? Hey, Jack, look at this kid's arm. Needle punches. Five, six, eight, eleven of them. Hey, what the heck? They don't hurt. Okay, you can roll your sleeve down now. What about these dreams? Well, it... Well, it takes me a long time to get out of our house. You mean in your dream you get up and dress and want to get out of the house? I don't want to, but I got to. For some reason, I got to. But you don't know what the reason is, huh? Yeah, that's it. And it takes me a long time to get out and I have to go through a lot of rooms. And they're big rooms and long rooms. I have to go through lots of doors. Lots of doors. Hurry, bud. Hurry up. Don't let them catch you. Hurry. Hurry. In every room I went into, my voice sounded different. Hurry, bud. Don't let them catch you. Hurry, hurry. Bud, hurry, hurry. They're after you. Don't let them catch you. You gotta hurry. You gotta hurry. <laughs> oh, don't cry like that. Take it easy, bud. It's just a dream. No, it isn't. Because one time a gun went off. And I heard somebody scream, and I wanted to put my shoes on in the morning, and they were all covered with mud. Oh, well, you can see how crazy that is. Look outside. It's so hot you could fry steaks, and it's been that way for the last four months. Now, how could you possibly get your shoes muddy in Southern California in August? It happened. I know it did. What happened? I killed somebody. Oh, hey, now, I better buck you didn't. You got your dreams all mixed up with Where the... was this? Where did it happen? Outdoors. That's all I know. You think you shot somebody? Sometimes. Sometimes I'm running and people are chasing me. Sometimes I dig a hole in the ground and bury things. Do you know what it is you bury? I don't know anything. Just wake up sweating and tired like I hadn't been in bed any of the time. What does your grandmother say to all this? <sighs> I don't tell her. I'd be scared to tell her. Why? Yeah, why? Grandmothers are wonderful people to tell things to. Not my grandmother. Okay, bud. We've talked about everything but the purse snatching. 
I know you don't want to talk about it, but we've got to. It's not part of the dream. Well, maybe not, but we'll talk about it just the same. How many times have you done this? Snatched a woman's purse. Just this once. Now look at me. That's it. Is that true? Honest. I believe it's true. Why did you do it? Honest, Mr. Packard, something made me. It was just like I'd done it before and just how to do it. I didn't want it all the time I was doing it. Hmm. People don't do what they don't want to do. Never mind that. But I want you to come in the back room, back here with me. What's back there? The makeshift laboratory. Come on. You want me, boss? You and Doc wait here. In with you, bud. <laughs> Funny business. Yeah. You picked yourself up quite a case. Well, what does Jack care what the kid dreams? <laughs> when I was a kid back in Texas, I used to have some dreams that would make Bud's dreams sound like mush and milk. Yeah? What'd you dream about? <laughs> women. What kind of women? Oh, honey, it didn't make no difference what kind of women. Just women. Oh, fine. Yeah, and speaking of women, Mary Kay, if there's anything cuter than the clothes you got on this PM, it's the stuff that's inside them. Ah, ah, ah. Mustn't touch. Oh. Still Jack Pack out of nobody, huh? That's the way it is. I swanny ain't life a crime. Me wanting you, and you wanting Jack. And I suppose Jack's wanting something he can't have either. You mean another woman? Hey, now, I didn't say that. You said that... <laughs> Perfectly all right, bud. If you'd shot a gun and killed anybody, there would have been little specks of powder embedded in the skin of your hand. And there wasn't any? Not a sign. Lots of burnt... No burnt powder. Oh, so that's what you was doing in there, giving him the burnt powder test. Mm-hmm. Huh? Get on your horse, Doc. Huh? Hey, we gotta go out in that hot glare again. We're going over and see Bud's grandmother. Oh, but if my grandmother finds out I brought anybody home... She's not gonna know. You're gonna stay here with Mary Kay. I don't trust her. Say, why do you say that? She's got that soap and water look in her eye. She's going to wash me. <laughs> well, why don't you let her? You might get to like it. Come on, Doc. <laughs> I'm coming. Well, take care of each other, you two. Hey, look. I'll make a deal with you. Yeah? What kind of a deal? You don't wash me. I don't run out on you. <laughs> why the big beef about washing? Doesn't your grandmother ever wield the wash rag? My grandmother don't ever make me do nothing. Well, she must care about you, or why does she give you injections to make you sleep? I don't know. But it's not because she cares about me. Oh, that's too bad. No, it ain't. It's okay. She don't care about nothing, and I don't care about nothing. And it's okay, see? of the house. What a fire trap. Look out we don't break our necks getting up on the porch. Well, come on. Now don't rap too hard. You'll knock the door off its hinges. Hmm. Maybe Grandma ain't home. Oh. Maybe she's out playing bridge at the Beverly Wilshire or having tea with the upper Hold house. it. Hmm? Somebody's answering the door. I don't hear nothing. She's listening just inside the door. Why don't you try knocking again? Well? You're Mrs. Edwards? The name be Mrs. Edwards. But why shouldn't it be? We represent an insurance company. Uh, and do I look like a good risk, young man? Oh, we're not trying to sell insurance. No? No. My name's Jack Packard. How do you do, Mr. Jack Packard? And this is Doc Long. Do tell. I've always been very partial to long, lanky young men with red hair myself. Why, Grandma, what a beautiful smile you got. <laughs> and from Texas, too. Yeah, <laughs> Texas boy, if there was one. How about us coming in and talking a little, huh? Just a minute. Huh? You said you was from the insurance. That's right. We're detectives for an insurance company. Oh. Detectives? Yes. What's you an insurance we... company need of detectives? Why, um... I don't know whether I should tell you this or not. Yes? Well, you see, when a person insured by our company dies and leaves a large amount of money for us to pay to his relatives... Somebody done that? Died and left a lot of money? Happens every day. I in. Bing door. 
You'll have to excuse me with no carpets on the floor, on account of they've been sent to the cleaners for weeks now. What she really means is pawn shop. Cut it out. Come right in, gentlemen. Come right in. There ain't much furniture, I grant you. But what there is, you're welcome to it. Hey, you think this apple box will hold me up? Well, suppose I am poor. There ain't no call to make fun of a poor old lady who's doing the best she can, is there? Oh, honest, Miss Edwards. I, I know how it is. I was young and thoughtless once myself. Young pawn be up. Tolerate, that's all. Just barely tolerated to handle what... Jack, why out of here in my business, huh? Oh, no, you mustn't go. You say somebody leaving the lot of you. Oh, Miss Edwards, that was just an old... Yes, Mrs. Edwards, just an old acquaintance. Huh? At least to understand. You do know, or should I say you did know, a gentleman by the name of... Mac Rob. Oh, you would be meaning dear old Robbie. And it would be that Robbie died and left me money. Of course I'm calling him maybe more times. Almost married me different times. He did. And if he left me more than he should. Us being what were to each other. Jack, yours. can go any further towards getting Rob McCauley's money for it. Ask you a few questions. It's about Robbie. No, they're not. Then, sir. What's my grandson to do with it? Everything, I think. But Ed's. That's right. Patient in the will. The money goes to you only providing you've been a good grand... I haven't been, Mother. Hmm, it's just in the will. You see, Mr. McCauley loved children. Ah, I remember we did. Oh, so we've got to make sure in our own mind here. But could we see it? By it. Why, I think the loving lad is at his school at the moment. Right. Well, I suppose it's really necessary to see him personally. And maybe show us around, show us his room and his toys. What for? They have some which to form opinion of your relation with your grandson. Did you ever know a grandmother and some children? No. Did you? Oh, no, not that I... Well, they... Bud and I can mother care how. He'd tell you the same thing if he was home. So what more... The way, Doc. Another appointment. Huh? Look, it's almost four o'clock... I wonder if you'll stay up with Mrs. I run along. What about the me? Uh, Doc will finish talking with you about that. Nice and old and such as you, Mr. Woods. Take good care of Mrs. Ed. Well, he certainly had to get up and go in a hurry. <laughs> yeah, that's Jack. Abrupt. Hey, you know what I think, Miss Edwards? What? I think Jack just got up and left on account of he wasn't getting anywhere with you. Getting anywhere? Why, sure. The minute you laid eyes on me and seen I was lanky and red-headed and from Texas... You wasn't interested in what he was saying at all. But what about Robbie McCauley's money? Oh, shucks. You ain't interested in money when you've got a lanky Texas boy here. Who says I'm not interested in money? Why, Grandma, what greedy eyes you got. You wouldn't by any chance be one of the original 1890 gimme girls, would you? Just what is this, anyway? Grandma, could I ask you something? Don't call me Grandma. And you get out of this house. Oh, gonna get tough, huh? You want me to call the police? Why, sure. You want me to get them on the line for you? Well, what do you want to ask? Grandma, what's that stuff you've been shooting into Bud's arm at night with that syringe? Hey, Grandma, don't look so scared. Where's Bud? Where's my boy, Bud? Just take it easy now. Nothing's the matter with Bud. Bud's a sickly boy. Bud's not well and... What's that? Huh? What's what? There's somebody in my bedroom. Hey, maybe you got burglars. Or maybe you're just hearing things. Listen. He's standing just on the other side of that door. Why, Grandma, what big ears you got. Look, the doorknob's turning. The door's opening. You. Well, if it ain't my old sidekick, John. You look pretty upset, Mrs. Edwards. What are you doing in my bedroom? You're an old lady, Mrs. Edwards. You shouldn't get so upset. Get out of my house. Do you hear me? Get out of my house. Sit down, Grandma. You let go of me. Sit down. Jack wants to talk to you. You can't do That's this it. to an old lady. You can't manhandle her. That'll be enough of that. You recognize this narcotic needle? Oh. Hey, a doggone syringe big enough for a horse. Mm. You do recognize it, don't you? It's the needle you've been using to give your grandson injections. What was the hypnotic drug you used? No, you're wrong. You're wrong. Never mind. Police laboratory will tell me quick enough. Where did you get this stuff? I'm a very old lady. It's a good thing you are, because I feel like messing somebody up good. Shooting a kid full of hypnotic drugs and then sending him out to do your dirty work for you. Hey, Jack, what kind of dirty work? Purse snatching, for one thing. When he was shot full of that stuff, he responded to any suggestion his grandmother made to him. That's how the old lady... Look, here's a couple of women's purses. Oh, ain't you a self you. Persicule old one. Oh, cut the crocodile <laughs> tears, Grandma. The most item. Found it tucked in the back corner of a bureau drawer. Old one. 
And on the back is engraved the following. Jotman from the Los Angeles Police Commission. Patrolman Beekman. But he's been missing three weeks. Well, the department's been like a bunch of caged wildcats. What's the matter? Nothing to do. Hmm. That's good either. That was a dirty bit trying to make a ten-year-old kid think he did it. Well, that hit up and you had it. the shot. Hear the officer's death cry. Over and over. Killed. He woke up. He believed it. They're at it. They persecute me. There's nothing I can do about it. You'll say on true. If I done all this, there's got to be a place. That's right. Have you the body? Grandma, you should have cleaned the shoes. Then. Shoes? Mother. Where would a boy get muddy shoes walking her hood in all? I don't know. I didn't either. Out and looked around. There's been some new street work not so long ago. What happened? Did a water main break? I don't know what you're suggesting. I'm suggesting that Patrolman Beekman was onto your little narcotic business. He told his office he was onto something. I think he came out here, put the bee on you, and you took care of him. Took care of him? Yeah. Then planted the body out in the street excavation where they were repairing the water main. It was at night. Bud told us that much. And that's how Bud got his shoes muddy. So you think somebody shot somebody? That's right. Sit down, Grandma. You take your hands off. I told you to sit down. Just a minute. Man handling an old lady. You think you're going to walk out on us? Who's walking out on anybody? You'll come with me. Where? Calling a body a murderess. I'll show you. Hey, watch it, Jack. She don't give you the slip. Who's giving anybody the slip? Stand aside so I can open this door. Hey, this old shack's got a basement. And what if it has? I'll show you if I'm a murderess or not. Keep on her heels, Jack. She's tricky. Well, you don't need to walk on the hem of my skirt. What's supposed to be down here? There, now. Hey, just a dirt floor. Dank and soggy as a marsh. And now you know why my grandson got mud on his shoes. Hey, you must have an underground spring here. Oh, oh, watch your step. It's dank on the inside of a cow. Is that why you brought us down here? To show us this soggy basement? Turn your flashlight over in the corner there. Hey, give me your flashlight. Yeah. Oh. Huh. There you are. Now say I'm a... Where is he? He's gone. Who's gone? What are you talking about? I had him tied up down here. How did he get away? You had who tied up down here? That Snoopy policeman. You had Officer Beekman tied down here in this basement for three weeks? He was hurt. I was nursing him back to health. Tied up down here in this pneumonia hatchery and you was nursing him back to health? You're nuts, Grandma. Doc, call the homicide squad. Tell them to bring their picks and shovels. To my grandma, Mary Kay, they got more cops swarming over that old lady's house than locust time in Kansas. Mrs. Edwards is under arrest for murder? Well, they ain't booked her yet. They're looking for Officer Beekman's body. Oh. They're digging up the street in front of the house and in the basement. It's buried there someplace. Why's Jack got Bud in his office? Well, I'm supposed to be catching you up on what's happened while he tries to pry something out of the kid. Now that his grandmother's in hock, what's to become of him? Bud? I don't know. Juvenile court, I reckon. Oh, that's too bad. Honestly, he's nice people. Once I got some of the dirty off his hands and face. Hey, he let you wash it? Sure. We got to be as pally as... Hey, I got a grandmother, too. No kidding. A nice girl like me? Of course I have. She and Grandpa live in the country. Uh Uh-oh. Jack wants us to come in. Yeah. No kidding, though, Doc. You know, I'm sure... What's the matter with the idea? Don't ask me if Bud likes it and your Grandma likes it. Come on in, you two. Hey, you got anything new, Jack? Bud and I have been talking about where he'd live. Yeah, I, I know she wasn't very much of a grandmother, but... Well, golly, when she's the only grandmother, there's a fella God. Hey, Bud, I was just thinking. Yeah? Yeah. I got a swell grandmother, a country grandmother. How'd you like to have a share of her? You, you think she'd want me? Make you a vet. You mean... You mean real country with cows and butter and stuff? Honest to goodness cows and honest to goodness butter. Hey, that's something I've always wondered about. Say, when you get butter right out of a cow, who do you pay your red coupons to? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'll take it, Mary Kay. Hello? Yeah, Packard speaking. Oh, hello, Inspector. Hey, what's that? Well, you don't say... 
Well, that's better than a... Oh, out of his head, huh? Well, good. Yeah, murder always leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Thanks for calling, Inspector. Check. Hey, what are you grinning about? Officer Beekman's alive. Well, shut up. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. The old lady did have him tied up. She fired at him, but only creased him. Tied him up and dragged him into the cellar. You said something about out of his head? He's in the county hospital. Picked up wandering dazed on the street, out of his head with fever. He's going to live. Yeah, but how did he get away? Old lady got careless or something. But he's alive, bud. And you know that's a wonderful thing for you? Yeah. You bet. Murder's a tough thing for a kid to carry around on his shoulders, even to the third and fourth generation. Hey, you know something? I'm nuts about the way you talk, Mr. Packard. Yeah? Even to the third and fourth generation. Yes, yeah, someday I'm going to talk like that. You could do a lot worse, bud. Talk like him. Act like him. Hey, I think you're in love with him. <laughs> he thinks she's in love with him. Talk about your department of understatement. Well, what's the matter with that, you dope? <laughs> I'm not the dope. Jack's the dope. D-O-P-E, with double palm and oak leaf cluster. And now, in place of the closing commercial, may we enumerate several other titles which are now in preparation for this series. The Great Airmail Robbery, Marriage by Death, The Voice from the Grave, The Wife Came Home, and... The Crime of a Man Named Jones. Also, may we remind you that the first motion picture version of I Love a Mystery is now playing at your local theaters. The second and third pictures are now in production at Columbia Studios. Mm -hmm.